Okay, so we're going to look at here how to calculate the number of trailing zeros in either of these two very large factorial numbers. Now these numbers are going to be really massive. We won't be able to fit them on this board and fit them into the screen. They're that big. Uh, 823 factorial is 2044 digits. This one is going to be miles more bigger than that. So to calculate the trailing zeros, we're going to need some sort of formula. Now, we're looking at, uh, looking at a factorial number. We know that it's 1 times 2 times 3 times 4 times 5 times 6, da, 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 all the way up to n. Now, when you're multiplying a number, and to get a zero at the end, which is what we're interested in in this question here, when we're multiplying by 1, by 2, by 3, by 4, any number you multiply that, you're not going to add any zeros, because 1 times 2 is 2, 3, 6, and 24, no zeros included. But once we multiply by a 5, and it's an even number, 24 times 5, that will give us 120. And this one here is an even number. So that's going to then yield us an, uh, a trailing zero. Now, if we move along down the line, multiplying by 6, multiplying by 7, multiplying by 8, multiplying by 9, that's going to not, not going to make any difference to any of those zeros on there. There's still only going to be one zero on the end. So what we can use is, we can use some uh, formula, uh, which is looking something like this. So I'm just going to write it like this. Trailing zeros. Now, this is just a word. It's not a, a number. We can give it a, a letter if we like. We can just call it, for example, we'll call it K. Now there's a formula for it. So this summation goes from x equals 1 to infinity. And we're going to make use of the greatest integer function, which is open square bracket, close square bracket, and then a number inside. Now the number inside here is going to be de derived from a formula. So it's going to be n divided by prime number to the power of x. Now, because we're looking for trailing zeros and we're interested in 5, we want this prime number to be 5. So let's just change this p to be a 5, because that's the only number we're interested in at the moment. Okay, and then we sum all these up, and then we hopefully get the number of trailing zeros. So we're interested in 823 factorial. So let's just plug that in. So k equals x equals 1 to infinity. Now our n, in this case, is 823. So let's just write that down here. And the p is 5. Well, we're only interested in 5 anyway because it's trailing zeros. OK, so 823. Divided by... 5 to the power of 1 in this first case. So how many 5s are there in 823? Well, 165s are 800, so that's going to give us 164. Okay, so now on to x equals 2. So for x equals 2, 823 divided by 5 squared. Now 5 squared we know is 25. So 25s into 823. 4 per 100, so that's going to give us 32. So that's our greatest integer uh, function there. It's 32 and a bit, but I'm just very interested in the whole numbers. Okay, so we're down to the next one. 823 by 5 cubed, so that's 125. So how many 125s in 823? Well, 4 would make 500, 6 would make 750. So that's going to be 6. And then on to the next one. So we're going to go through all the possibilities. 5 to the power of 4, that's uh, 5, 5 is 25. Square that, 625. So that's just going to give us 1. And then on to the next one. 823, 5 to the power of 5. Well, 5 to the power of 5 is 625 times 5, which is 3,125. So in terms of the greatest integer function, this is just going to yield 
a zero. As we got to a zero here with five to the power of five using the summation uh, formula, we're not going to need to pro progress any further. So now what we need to do is just add up this, these numbers here, and that will give us our trailing zeros in 823 factorial. So 164, 196, 202, 203. So therefore we can say there are 203 trailing zeros in 823 factorial. So if you write that number out, I think I said 2044 digits for 823 factorial. So you would get to 1841. And then after that, all you'd be writing would be zeros to get to the end of the 2044. Okay, so that's how we work out 823 factorial trailing zeros. So now let's move on to 2023. Okay, so for 2023, now we've got our n equals 2023 for this formula. So then we want k equals the sum of x equals 1 to infinity, greater to integer of 2023 5 to the x, so then this is going to lead us to, so we just go through the x equals 1, 2, 3, 4 and so on, so 2, 0, 2, 3, 5 to the power of 1, so how many 5s into 2023, well 400 fives is 2000, so 404 will be in uh, five, so you multiply 5 by 4 of 4, we get 2020, and then that will give us our lowest uh, value that we can do. That's a whole number. And then we've got 2023, 5 squared. Well, that's 5 squared, 25, 4 per 100, and we've got 20 of those. So that's going to give us 80. So that's then going to give us 80. Okay, we might run out of space on the side here. 2023 5 cubed. 5 cubed is 125. Now there's 8 125s per thousand. So that's then going to give us, as it's 2023, it's going to give us 16. Okay, 2023 5 to the power of 4. 5 to the power of 4 is 625, that's 25 squared. So 625 cubed is going to give us 1875. So that will give us our greatest integer value for that one. Now I'm thinking this one is probably going to be our last one on here. 5 to the power of 5. 5 to the power of 5 is 3125. So this is going to give us a zero. And as our x is only going up to 5, and we get a zero, we don't need to go on any further because 5 to the power 6, 5 to the power 7, these will all still yield zeros. So it'll make no difference to our value here. So all we left to do now is to add these up, which is 404, 484, 500, 503. So therefore we can say there are 500 and 503 trailing zeros in 2023 factorial. Okay.